And let's continue on with our exploration of the Matabeset Trail. I have made my way north on Fowler Mountain to what's called the Three Notches. I'm running out of time, so I'm not going to be able to get to the top of the Three Notches and video them, but I am on the scree slope below them. And I've uh, just been a little, do a little off trail hiking. I'm just about 100 yards from the trail here, but this um, basalt rock or trap rock breaks into nice, even angular ch chunks. I mentioned it's often quarried for building stone, for railroad beds and road beds. Some of the sandstones around here are actually quarried for uh, brownstone construction, which is common in New York City and other cities. Um, but this is more for like road beds. It doesn't break into large chunks, but to nice angular small chunks. So here's our scree field. It's got to be a couple hundred feet high here. It's got all kinds of mosses growing on these rocks and some lichens. I'll zoom in on the lichens up here. And where it's most exposed to the sun, it's actually almost bleached above me here. And we've got a black birch that's clinging on. It's probably found some deeper soils underneath this scree slope. And it's got that horizontal lines on the bark. And it breaks into plates as it gets older. And living on this scree slope, this tree is only 10 inches across, but it may be quite old because of the challenging growing conditions. So these scree slopes are kind of interesting. They provide habitat for all kinds of animals. I will make the comment that this is a south facing scree slope. This would be the preferred den site for snakes, including copperhead snakes, which do inhabit these ridges. So I would not advise uh, exploring off the trail onto a scree slope that faces south, especially during the warmer months. This is where they would come out to warm up in early spring and probably be doing the same so in early fall. In the midsummer, the copperhead snakes and other snakes tend to dis disperse from their den sites, and you could find them just about anywhere. But um, they're not aggressive snakes, but I know better to, and to uh, you know, bother them when they're trying to warm up after a long winter's nap. And this was something I would not advise. Today, the snow is melted, but it isn't that warm. There's no concern about reptiles today. It's about 40 degrees and comfortable fall type hiking. What started as a winter day has become more fall like, but real pretty here without the sun's come out. We've got these nice rusty colors of these rocks. And this type of rock forms some incredible cliffs north of here on Mount Higby and West Peak in Meriden and some of the other mountains in the uh, Connecticut Valley. And I didn't go to those places today because the purpose of this channel is I'm really trying to get to lesser known parks. And part of this trail has gone through what's called Tri-Mountain State Park. It's really only on paper only. There's no signs for it. There's no access except on this trail. But it is public ownership. On the north end of this hike, I have made it to what's called the Three Notches here. See if I can find that here. There it is, Three Notches from where I parked. So I've basically done about a mile's worth of Pistapog Mountain and turned around and then came up about two miles on Fowler Mountain, almost to the three notches, but I do have a get, I do need to turn around at this point. So that'll have to wait for another day, but this is interesting geology. The lava flows that form this basalt and trap rock are common in this part of Connecticut and parts of Massachusetts and the Palisades of New York and New Jersey. So um, if you're interested in geology, this is a neat place to explore and um, well worth your visit. And fairly good footing on most of these trails too. This is not difficult footing um, if you stay on the trail. There's a few rocky patches, but nothing real uh, difficult.